bottom bracket standards, we know there are absolutely dozens of them, but why? This is a question that you guys ask me loads. Why all these different standards? Well, at the moment in the workshop, we've got a collection of bikes that actually help us answer that question. So I'm gonna start with this. This is a Swinerton Cycles. This is from the era when lots of bike shops actually welded their own frames because you could just buy a custom tube in, put it on a jig, weld it, paint it yourself. In fact, we had one here in Kendall, Bruce's bike shop for a long time, did their own custom frames before it became cheaper to do in China, etc. So here's the story. This had a 68 millimeter wide bottom bracket and the chain stays were welded onto this area. And you can see it's got very skinny 23 millimeter wide tires. <clears throat> and we want those nice short chain stays. Having short chain stays generally means that your bike feels more agile, more nimble, and it's been what all the current brands are trying to achieve with various weird carbon shapes, which we'll come on to later in the video. Back to the Swinerton, and as you can see, we've got plenty of surface area here to weld on a round steel lug and still accommodate a 23 millimeter tire. In fact, the chain stays on this are a beautifully short, 400 millimeters, absolutely beautiful. Next up, we have a slightly more up-to-date aluminium frame from Cube. Now, the common trend is we want 25, even 28 millimeter tires, which means we have to do something with the chain stays. And what they actually did is start to hydrofilm these or squish them in a little bit. So you had to try and find some more surface area to weld them onto this bottom bracket or you make the chain stays a little bit longer. In this case, they've done a combination of the two. They've squished the chain stays ever so slightly and then overlies them, but kept with the standard 68 millimeter shell BSA without any sort of expansion there. But the consequence of that is that the chain stays now grow in size and we're now at 41. So we've grown a whole centimeter in chain stay length to accommodate the extra wide tires and still allow some decent amount of material there for welding. Next up, we're into the realm of carbon fiber. This is a very early carbon fiber. This is the old Trek OLCV stuff from the United States Postal Service team. You might remember that. And in this era, they sort of had a bit of a problem where the tire width was trying to be pushed out to 25 millimeters, was becoming a lot more standard, and amateurs were probably trying to run 28 millimeters. They also had the problem of trying to maintain the stiffness as well with the bottom bracket. So you ended up with these big bulbous shapes to try and improve stiffness and the chain stays started to become a little bit more overlized, so we needed a bit more surface area down here. And with that came the requirement to get back to long chain stays. So this is a 41 millimeter chain stay, which kind of made the handling of these bikes quite sluggish, but it did mean that they could accommodate that 28 millimeter tire. But really after this era, the drive was really to try and shorten the chain stays and to try and increase the bottom bracket stiffness in the era of carbon fiber, which leads us on to, this is where we started to see engineers come up with new bottom bracket standards. This one you can see is a PF30, and you can see we've got so much more surface area here, which means we can stiffen everything up by elongating the chain stays here and adding a whole bunch more stiffness. And also the tire clearance here is getting pretty neat as well. And the benefit of this means that we're now back down to a almost 40s, a 40.5 millimeter chain stay and maintaining a 25 millimeter tire width as well. Shimano introduced the world to BB86, commonly known as press fit. This means that we now have an 86.5 millimeter wide shell, but in order to keep the Q factor correct, remember the Q factor is the distance between these two crank arms, we had to mount the cranks virtually flush with the frame. So we needed to introduce that press fit bottom bracket to enable us to do that. You'll also see that we have a bit more material to play with here in order to keep things stiff. But because the demand was towards wider tires, the chain stay length still kept creeping up. And in fact, this one is not quite 41 centimeters, 40.8 maybe. Quickly to cover off mountain biking, because while this is going on, mountain bikes were introduced with a 73 millimeter wide bottom bracket so that from the very outset, we could have much wider tires, but also we still needed to make this chain stay significantly longer. And that wasn't so much of a problem in mountain biking where the actual wheelbase added to the stability of the ride. But definitely we still wanted to make sure it didn't get out of control as tires got wider and wider. 
quick one on gravel frames as well. This is a Mason Bocker, and the idea behind gravel frames is to open up the rear and have a much, much wider tire clearance, but we still don't want those chain stays to get out of control. And when you have aluminium, we can now do hydroforbin, so we can do much more imaginative shape with our chain stays, and you can see here where they bent the chain stay to allow for some more tire clearance. But now we have the problem of how much area we have to weld to. So this, although it's a 68 millimeter shell, they've actually done another outer shell, if you like, to make sure they've got enough surface area to weld these chain stays onto. So we still end up with some pretty, pretty wide tire clearance. But to accommodate that, we are now up to, this is 43 centimeter chain stay length. So we're getting very long now. Again, not so long because it is gonna go off road and introducing stump stability is okay. Right, now we're up to the modern era. This is a Cannondale System 6, 68 millimeter shell width on a PF30, remember, but it gives us loads of surface area for making some very wide and very stiff chain stays. And because of this more advanced carbon fiber manufacturing, we can start doing a lot more with the shapes, which means that we can now accommodate in at least a 25 millimeter tire. And most impressively, our chain stay length is back down to 40 centimeters, which is the same as the Swinerton that I showed you right at the start of the video. It's taken us all this time to get back to a decent chain stay length. Final piece of this puzzle is when SRAM and Cannondale started to introduce much bigger diameter crank axles, which means we also need to have much bigger bearings to be able to, be able to support that. We also had a much more of a drive towards even wider tires. And for that, I've got two bikes I want to show you up in the YouTube studio. So then we have another couple of bottom brackets I want to introduce. We have the concept of BB386 Evo, which is a 86 millimeter wide bottom bracket, but also 46 millimeter uh, in diameter, which means that we can now get some really big bearings and accommodate things like SRAM dub and BB30 axles. Now, the benefit of this is we can now start um, bringing out these chain stays as well. We've got much more surface area to work with because now with gravel bikes, we want 45, 50 millimeter tires and we're getting much more inventive with our gears as well. So this one is running a one by on a 46 tooth chain ring. So we still got to make sure that we have enough clearance. So these chain stays now need to become quite inventive shapes to accommodate this size of chain ring. Here's an interesting thing because um, we're now introducing crank sets like SRAM dub wide, which, I mean, I'll show you the clearance on this in a second, but if we were to put the SRAM dub wide crank set and boost this out by another two and a half millimeters, we'd then start to have a very, very extreme chain line to the back. Now you would normally compensate by that by putting a spacer behind the cassette and also bringing the cassette out by two and a half millimeters. This particular one's got a classified hub and we can't do that. So we're definitely restricted in sizes with what we can do here. But the only way out of this is to become even more inventive with some of our carbon shaping. Check this out. So, so this is the trend that we are now seeing in gravel, this dropped change day, all to try and keep this distance as short as possible, but now allowing at least 50 millimeters worth of tire clearance. So now you can see the shapes that we're having to make in order to keep the Q factor nice and tight and we don't necessarily want the Q factor of our gravel bikes to go as wide as our mountain bikes but at the same time we're now running almost mountain bike width tires so all of that tire width has to go somewhere which is now why we are seeing all these sort of inventive shapes and we have a real need for BB386 Evo or T47 internal to exist because we need that surface area to make this happen. So in this case we have mountain bike tires on a road Q factor on a 43 centimeter chain stay length. Pretty impressive. You'll be seeing a bit more of this on the channel soon, don't worry. Right, one last bike to really demonstrate the point of where the technology is going now because this is a 3D Strada. You're gonna see more of this on the channel in a second, but we need to strip it down to make sure we show you guys the inside of the frame and all sorts, and we're gonna be rebuilding it with a proper group set, Campagnolo Super Record Wireless S coming up full shakedown on that, make sure you subscribe if you're keen to see our take on that. But with all this funky shapes, love it or hate it, 
what it means that we can now run at least a 32 millimeter tire and still maintain a 40 centimeter chain stay. And of course, we've got all that bottom bracket rigidity because we're running BB386 Evo down there. So some inventive shapes, yes, but I think we got back to where we were in the 1980s with the Swinerton cycles, but now with the tire width we want and probably the frame weight and rigidity that we wanted all along. Okay, <laughs> so what can we learn from all this? Well, essentially, if you want a bike with very nimble, agile handling, you want to be looking for something with a relatively short wheelbase and short chain stays, then you might need to be looking at the bottom bracket area to work out how much of a compromise you are willing to make. One, in terms of stiffness and strength, Generally speaking, if you go for a nice wide bottom bracket like BB386 Evo or T47 internal, you're going to find something that's going to be good, strong and stiff. If they're trying to manipulate that and fit it all into a skinny little BSA or Italian bottom bracket, they've obviously sacrificed something there to make sure they get the short chain stays and it's normally going to be in stiffness. Take a closer look at your bikes. There's way more details than necessarily meets the eye from all the marketing speak and I hope this gave you some sort of insight into making those sort of decisions. If you like this video and you found it useful please let me know down in the comments and if you really enjoyed it think about subscribing to the channel and tell your friends. All right see you on the next one.